fine. We move on to our further discussion of the landscape of soul by Nathalai Triviroy. And by now, it is abundantly clear that regarding the difference between the Chinese painting and the European painting, it is the question of uh, eyes and mind. For uh, whereas the Chinese painter uh, wants you to enter his mind, a uh, European painter would like to would like you to borrow his eyes, and uh, it is precisely from here that the concept of illusionistic uh, realism has uh, come, which can loosely be defined as exact depiction of nature of outside world, uh, wherein the resemblance is uh, to such an extent that it appears, that it creates the illusion of being real. So, whereas the Chinese painter does not want you to borrow his eyes, he wants you to enter his mind, a uh, European painter would rather lend his eyes to you and look at his creation from his uh, perspective. <coughs> this is abundantly, so therefore, <coughs> Therefore, the, the painting which actually depicts a landscape is uh, the landscape of soul, the inner world of the artist. So the artist, the Chinese painting takes you into an inner conceptual abstract world. And this is exactly uh, what the first anecdote uh, talks about, uh, wherein Wu uh, Daozi, the painter, wanted the emperor of Tang region, Zhuang Zhong, to enter his landscape, the spiritual landscape. So basically it boils down to involvement. Uh, whereas a Chinese painter would like your spiritual and mental involvement besides physical involvement, a European painter would only uh, find comfort or satisfaction in the fact that he has been able to physically involve the, the admirer. That, is, uh, that also holds true with uh, the other <coughs> anecdote involving uh, master blacksmith in Antwerp uh, called Quinton Metzis. Now, he created a fly and the blacksmith was, uh, the painter was, uh, so, so real was uh, the creation that uh, master tried to swat it away. <coughs> Fine, so, so this is illusionistic likeness. We move further and uh, we must also understand that uh, the basis of Chinese painting is uh, Taoism which is a way of life, a philosophy and uh, it is <coughs> based on the philosophy of Taoism, which means path or way, or the way into the mystery of the universe. So the first particular anecdote illustrates the fact that the emperor may rule over territories, but the artist alone knows the way within. And, uh, we may further understand that life has no meaning unless uh, we undertake an inner or a spiritual journey. When actually Wu Daozi said, let me show you the way, he meant the way to the inner meaning of art or mystery of the universe. 
which is actually the essence of uh, Chinese painting, which is actually the essence of Chinese painting. Now, <clears throat> a Chinese painter, therefore, wants the viewer to take plural viewpoints to enter into his painting and travel in it. That simply means he's, uh, he wants an objective uh, analysis or interpretation of his creation. And for that, uh, an active participation is required. As I said, not only physical, but also mental. And his copy is not the copy of the exact landscape. <coughs> his copy is not the copy of the exact land landscape. And in Taoism, uh, uh, Taoism doesn't real, really represent a real landscape and in order to understand that we must understand Taoism so which actually involves uh, two complementary poles uh, <coughs> which complete the existence of each other and uh, however there's a mid void in between uh, the contact point of these two poles and man plays a very important it is here that uh, the exact creation takes place and man is responsible for this creation man is the medium actually of uh, communication or interaction of the two poles and uh, <coughs> 